Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, this evening, uh, Friday, July 12th, we'd like to welcome everybody here, whether you be here at the Family Life Center or watching wherever you may be this evening. We thank the Lord and appreciate God for another opportunity to share his word. And, you know, that, that's how our faith increases, by hearing the word of God. And Lord knows in these times we, need, we all need it. I need it. I, I, I need all the help I can get from God. But I thank God that he's faithful and just and he's always there on time. Praise God. Uh, with this, um, we're going to go into a word of prayer before we begin anything. And uh, thank you, Lord. We appreciate you, God, this evening, God. We ask, God, that your word continue, God, to engraft in our hearts, in our minds, in our soul, God. So that Jesus, hallelujah, we come more like you, God. On a daily basis, God, I want to thank you and appreciate you, God. The work you do in us, God, we understand now. Lord, we see what you do in us, God. And we no need to run anymore, hallelujah, under any pressure, hallelujah. Because you are the one that holds us up, God. You are the one that guides us. You are the one that leads us, God. I thank you and appreciate you, God. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Once again, we welcome everybody here this evening on our Friday night service. Uh, we're going to begin with our first uh, scripture. If you please stand, reverence for the word. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 10. With the help of the Lord, uh, everybody receive as I did uh, going through this study. More studied me than I studied it. Thank God. Exodus chapter 10, uh, verse 24 and on. It reads like this. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. And verse 25 reads like this. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. And verse 26 reads like this. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not be any hoof Left behind, for therefore he, we take to serve the Lord our God, and we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come hither. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, we welcome you this evening. Hallelujah. As God here warns uh, Pharaoh through Moses, so does God warn us also through his word. Praise the Lord, somebody. Uh, through the word, through, through those who preach, those who teach, even our own personal Bible study time reading, you, I, I, I know the Lord speaks because if I get convicted, he's telling me, hey, hey you got to cut that out. Or it reminds me and brings me back, puts me back in where I ought to be. Praise God. And in the, in Let's go to the same chapter, verse uh, chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. Let's read it together. Chapter 10, same chapter, verse 3 and 4. It reads like this. And Moses and Aaron came unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourselves before me? Let my people go, and they that they may serve me. Verse 4 reads, reads like this. Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow will I bring locusts into thy coast. Praise God, somebody. God sent Moses and Aaron to Pharaoh and said, you need to listen to God and let his people go. So they can go and worship him. If you don't, if you don't, God's gonna, he's, God's gonna send another plague, basically, and worse than the one that came before. Now, prior to this point, point, there was other plagues that had already come onto Pharaoh and Egypt. Praise the Lord, somebody. So through these plagues, God was warning Pharaoh to let God's people go, or it's gonna get worse. Bottom line, that's what he's telling. Them. Because whatever survived the, the other plagues, whatever is still living, 
your plants, your livestock, food sources. I will send a locust, and they will eat everything up in sight. Praise God, somebody. Well, as we read, Pharaoh refused to let the, the, the people go. So God let the locusts come, as we read, and they ate everything in sight. Praise the Lord, somebody. This was a pattern that happened uh, time after time in this study uh, of Exodus. Praise the Lord, somebody. God would they'll warn Pharaoh, let my people go, and if you refuse to listen, I'm going to send this plague, and I'm going to go do this, and this is going to happen, and this, and this, and this. He was warning Pharaoh, if you do not let go, it's going to come. Only because Pharaoh would not obey or not listen. Praise the Lord, somebody. God was simply asking him how to, uh, him to do what was right and what was just. Praise the Lord, somebody. Nothing out of the ordinary. And at this is what God's word was doing. At, it tells us also what is right and what is wrong, even to this day. It, it, when we go through Bible studies, we go lifeline Bible studies, Wednesday night Bible studies, Sunday service, God's word reminds us, redirects us, and convicts us, and, and, and leads us once again on the right path. Because we could go astray without even noticing it, brothers. If you be real with yourself, like, <laughs> Brother Ramirez, what are you doing? What, what, what's going on? What's, oh, I, I may not even notice what's right or wrong. That's why I say, Pastor, if there's any chastising you got to do, let me know quickly because I may not see it. And if you do, let me know. I, 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 no, praise God. Thank you, Jesus, that I have somebody who watches over my soul. Praise the Lord, somebody. And I, I thank God for a pastor, and I thank God for the ministry of, of this church that God has put here. Not only has God put the ministry, the ministry of Lifeline also, a men's rehab center, not only of rehab of the alcohol, of the drugs, of all this other spiritual rehab. Praise the Lord, somebody. And I, only because, once again, only because God, the Pharaoh would not obey or not listen, God would, God's word would tell him, hey, if you do not, this is going to come. If you don't, it's going to come. It's a warning. When the example stands out, uh, one of the examples that stands out in Exodus, that God can certainly harden a wicked man's heart for his own purpose. Praise the Lord, somebody. They, they say, I've heard it and it preached and said, Pharaoh was full of pride, his heart was hardened. No, God already had hardened his heart. So that God's plan to come to pass. Praise the Lord, somebody. Because his heart was nowhere near God's power and authority. Praise the Lord, somebody. He does it. Once again, God can certainly harden a man's heart for his own purpose. He certainly can. Praise the Lord, somebody. He doesn't owe us a first chance, a second chance, a tenth chance. No, he doesn't owe us nothing. Praise God. God hardened Pharaoh's heart to prove a point. To write a story that would teach people to this day about God's supremacy and, uh, and the foolishness of pride. And to this day, we read the story. You might have heard it. You read it. You read it. You hear it. And, man, it reminds you of what pride can lead you, even, even before a man of God. Praise God, somebody. God doesn't owe us, any of us, his grace. We, we certainly don't want to harden our own hearts. We must be very careful about the condition of our own hearts. The Bible says, it is wicked and perverse amongst all things. Who can know it? Who can know it? He's talking to me. I may not know it at times. Praise God, somebody. But as we read in verse 24, Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye serve the Lord, only let your... Your flocks and your herds be stayed. Leave them behind. And let your little ones also go with you. Now, after all that, Pharaoh and Egypt had uh, been through, 
at this time. Hallelujah. Just like our enemy, uh, the enemy of our souls. He doesn't give up, tries everything in his so-called power to put conditions on us at times. Oh, yeah, you can compromise with a little of this and a little of that. Now, watch how Pharaoh thought to compromise the most important prize with Moses and Aaron. As we read, uh, watch this. Pharaoh says, let the men go, and the, and the men refuse to go without the rest of their families. Praise God, somebody. That kind of speaks right there to each and every one of us. We should never even cross our mind to think to go on without our loved ones. Oh, yeah, God's working in me. God's working in us. God's working in us. Yes, for what? To be the leaders for our own families. Praise the Lord, somebody. Uh, you know as well as I do, before we got here, we couldn't lead ourselves to the, uh, never mind, praise God. Uh, and the assistants or advisors of Pharaoh came to Pharaoh and said, look, man, you uh, have you not seen the news? <laughs> Brother, everything in our whole village is burning down, gone, eaten by locusts, on and on and on. They come to your senses, Pharaoh. How can you deny the facts? Let the man go. Oh, uh, Moses uh, walks into Pharaoh's presence and says, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go. Pharaoh says, just take your wives, watch and your children, your, watch your little ones, but leave the animals behind. Leave them behind. Why would Moses need an animal in the wilderness? I, I could think of a lot of important things in the wilderness. You know, you take some water, maybe a lot of shade, umbrellas, uh, something to give you shelter. In a hot desert, take a hammer, some nails, some wood, and a cup, and take some food. Maybe Pharaoh thought, oh, they'll be back once they get an appetite and they start hungry and the animals are not there. What are they going to do? Why would you contend for an animal, Pharaoh? He could have been thinking, ah, oh, they'll be back without... Nothing to eat or no milk for the babes? Or could it have been a request of animals was, he knew was part in order of the Old Testament in serving God? You see, animals were, were more than uh, pets in the backyard. Animals and blood and the blood running through their veins were the very sacrifice that pleased the Lord in the Old Testament. Praise the Lord, somebody. When Pharaoh tried to offer Moses another deal, a compromise, as we spoke of earlier, another, can you just bend a little bit, Moses? Come on, go, but leave your animals. Go, that, you, go ahead. He's literally saying, you can take your, your families, but leave your worship behind. It was not just for the physical hunger, but for a spiritual death, he wanted the animals behind. Praise God, somebody. Leave your worship behind is basically what he was saying. This, this is where it gets interesting. I pray that we, we, we don't come to a place and come to just serve the Lord and, and leave our worship behind before you come into this place. Hallelujah. Say, pray, say no praise left behind. Tell your neighbor, no praise left behind, brother. Now say, no worship left behind. Praise the Lord, somebody. We've got to take our children, our uncles, our mothers, our, our, our wife, our cousins. We cannot leave nothing behind. Praise God, somebody. Hallelujah. We've got to, in fact, like we read in the scripture, not even a hoof. 
What? A hoof? <laughs> Are you for real, Moses? A hoof? You, get, you, get, you got caught up over a few cow hooves? Yeah. Yeah, because you, you don't know if we might need it to worship God. That's what he said. When we, we come up tither to God, we don't know if we're going to need to worship. He didn't want to leave nothing behind. Hallelujah. What he's saying is, I, I'm bringing all my worship with me, all of it. Even if we walk into the wilderness, I'm taking my worship. Praise God, somebody. And then we come to find out he, he don't need no umbrellas. He don't need, they got raw water out of a rock. They got a cloud by day and by night. They didn't need umbrellas. They didn't need water. All they needed the animals for worship. Not one hoof shall be left behind in this crazy Egyptian world for us. Praise the Lord, somebody. Oh, yeah, I might not be ready yet. Oh, no, but God is preparing us. He knows what he's doing. And there's a lot more people than us here who need the Lord to guide us through the mountaintop, the valley, in the wilderness, anywhere we're at. We need God's assistance. Hallelujah. I know that they don't understand it at times the way we talk. Sometimes when we talk like this, I know that they can't make sense of our worship. Sometimes and some brothers around here running around like... <laughs> And coming out of Egypt and all the Lord has done. But take my word for it. You're going to need everything that belongs to you. You're going to need everything that belongs to you. Praise God, somebody. Every, every, everything that belongs to you. Every sacrifice where God is going to take you. Praise God, somebody. You, you're going to need every kind of praise. You're going to need every kind of worship in the wilderness. Why did they God send them in the wilderness? Because they weren't ready? Nah, he, he knew who he chose. God knows what he's doing. He chooses somebody here to go out. And you think, oh, me? Yeah, you. Why not you is the question. Praise God. You know why? Because we, we tend to automatically think in the physical terms, I, I, I'm not ready. I, I, not about us. It's all about him. Praise God. The we, the we, that's one reason, as I sat back, seeing some men singing and worshiping before Bible study, testifying with freedom. Uh, why? Because of him. All because of him. With freedom and, you know, to be able to lift their hands, to be able to sing and shout with a sober mind. Praise God. I remember we used to do that. In a stupor, in a stupor, I had drunk. I didn't care. Who cares? The laughing, ah, who? That's the same spirit we ought to have today, knowing who we're worshiping, knowing who we're glorifying, knowing where we're going, knowing who we're going with, and knowing where we're going to end up. <laughs> Praise the Lord, somebody. So, some of you here are, are, are breaking out of religious. Uh, out of a religious box. Sometimes we come in here not knowing, so it's like not a peep out of you. Because <laughs> we've been taught the ways of the world. We're not gonna we're not gonna we, we, we don't stay silent no more because the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. But now that you're Become, we become uh, familiar with God's word, his, his wisdom, his knowledge. Now I can't stay silent. No way. Praise be to God, somebody. I got something that, man, I'm always looking for this. All my life, I finally found it. You know, when you come to an altar for the first time and you see, feel God just caress your soul, your heart, and you're weeping like a baby, it is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You come to a place where you say, man, I should have got here a long time ago, man. But I thank God he has us here this evening. Hallelujah. The world, the world you know, some, some of us, like I said, 
The world can go and eat, uh, do whatever it decides to do, but as far as me and my house, as the word says, we will serve the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. They, um, tell someone, I plan on serving the Lord. I plan on serving the Lord. Praise God, somebody. They, they can do whatever they want. They can uh, vote for whoever they want. They can act crazy. They can carry away. They can tell lies. They can put fear, try to put fear in our spirit. Hallelujah. But every chance I get, I'm getting to the house of the Lord. Praise God, somebody. This is my refuge. This is my refuge. Praise. He is my covering. Praise God, somebody. And coming in with a praise. Glory be to God. Not one hallelujah will be left behind. Glory to God. Not one hoof shall be left behind. Not one family member is going to be left behind. No, 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 no. Not one hoof shall be left behind, Pharaoh. You know why the devil can't have it? Like Moses said to Pharaoh, well, our cattle also shall go with us. This is why the enemy can't have it, because it doesn't belong to him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, I'm not going to give up to anybody what does not belong to them. Much less the enemy. The, the, oh, praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the, your praise and your worship doesn't belong to the enemy. Bottom line, hallelujah. Take, the worship, it's yours. The worship comes from me. Worship doesn't come from God. God gave us faith. He gave us the Holy Ghost. He gave us Jesus. He gave us the word. Worship comes from you to him. Praise God, somebody. That's what you can offer God no matter where you're at. <laughs> no matter what you can see or what you can't see, you can offer a worship that comes from you. That's one thing God did not give you. He gave you everything else. He gave me everything else. The worship comes from you. Even when you can't see, praise be to God. When you can't see it, you don't understand it, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, tell your brother, it's yours. It's yours. That worship is yours. Why would we allow the enemy of our souls to try to take it away? Try to put water on it with, with somebody over there who's weak-minded. No, 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 no. God, my, my word says that God is a jealous God. Why would I stand there and start arguing with some, somebody who got nothing to do with Jesus? No, no, you're taking time from God. I, I'm busy right now. I got to go. Praise be to God, Jesus. Let's go. You got to seek out your own salvation, the Bible says, with fear and trembling. Hallelujah. I love you, brother, but glory be to God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Not one miracle will be left behind in Egypt. Not one hallelujah will I leave in Egypt. Praise God, somebody. Not one breakthrough am I going to leave. For myself and my family. Why? That, that's on me. If I walk away from it. If I give up on it. If I quit on it. And if I lumber on it. That's me. That's not the enemy. That's me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Not one hoof shall be left behind, Pharaoh. Brother, I, 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 not one blessing shall be left behind. Not my, our whole family cannot be left behind. Praise God, somebody. Not one healing shall be left behind. Praise the Lord, somebody. Not one answer you have been praying on shall be left behind. You can't leave it or walk away. Oh, I haven't heard, I haven't heard, I haven't heard. Brother, brother, praise be to God. Uh, not one sign or wonder shall be left behind. Praise the Lord, somebody. You want to see a sign and wonder, look to your neighbor. Hallelujah. You can look at me too. I'm a sign and a wonder. Praise God. I'm taking my dance out of Egypt, hallelujah, into the wilderness. Praise God. I'm going to take my hallelujah out of Egypt into the wilderness. Praise God, somebody. Why are you going, why are you going to the wilderness? Somebody asked, why are you going to, we're getting to ready to have a feast with the Lord, brother. Praise God, somebody. 
going to prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. Hallelujah. That, that same enemy has been keeping you up at night. Is going to see you rest. Rest, I said, in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah, Jesus. The word, this word stands forever. What God has said is from heaven. And then nobody can change this because when God says it, it's for eternity. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. It's forever. You just got to work on believing it and work it. Praise God, somebody. I read not one child will be left behind. Right now, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You're ready to say break up your, your children. Your, there's a breakthrough coming for your own children right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. They're coming out of bondage. Hallelujah. Hey, brother, how do you know? Oh, remember, it all starts in the spiritual. Hallelujah, Jesus. James chapter 2, 17 reads like this. James shall even saw your faith. If it had not works, it is dead being alone. Praise God, somebody. How do we work this, Brother Ramirez? Hallelujah. So we, we, how do you even saw your faith works being dead being alone so this is why we put our faith into action by what by trusting in God and being obedient to his word glory be to God can help us pass our spiritual test praise God somebody once again trusting in God and there's many other things uh, spending time with God daily spending time with God daily and I know more, uh, most all of us here do hallelujah reading some Bible Praise God, somebody. There are but a few ways. These are just but a few ways that we put our faith into action. Praise God, somebody. Now, why were we worried about a little hoof? Why are you worried about a little hoof, Moses? Hallelujah. Why would you fight over a hoof? Because the spirit of compromise says, if you give the enemy a hoof, He's going to want to take the whole animal. Praise God, somebody. So you keep playing around with leaving something a little behind and compromise. Hallelujah, Jesus. If he sees you give in and give up and surrender, or if he ever sees you bending to his pressure, praise be to God. Guess what? He's going to put more pressure and more pressure. But, Lord, we're not... We're not standing on our own strength, brothers. Hallelujah, Jesus. What we want is what we want is be in church and you know be be righteous and have everybody like us at the same time. Oh man, somebody! If you love Jesus and His Word, you will be misunderstood at times. We will be misunderstood at times, but not because not everyone's going to like you. Oh, he thinks he's spiritual. He thinks he's a. Uh, Oh, they don't know why you think like that. It's not because of me. Hallelujah, Jesus. We'll get there one day. Praise God. Because once again, because living for Jesus, doing what he called us to do is going to create some hostility even in your own life. Praise God. Jesus said, think not I came to give peace, hallelujah, but I came to give a sword, hallelujah. In other words, when you follow the word, you preach the word, you walk the word, you're going to cut some people, you're going to cut some stuff, and then people are not going to like it. Oh, why do you do this? Oh, it says right here, boom, 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 boom. Oh, man, they're not going to like it because you know what? They, 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 may, may, be, they may come uh, aware and knowledgeable of the word, but if they don't want to change, it's called... Not wanting to repent. Simple. When this word came to me, thank the Lord by his mercy, it kept digging, it kept cutting, it kept cutting, it kept cutting. So I said, you know what? <laughs> Give it up, man. You're losing, man. You're losing. Quit trying to swim up the river. And if the river's coming and you stand still, I'll just stay here. You're not doing nothing either. Praise the Lord, somebody. Some had left a hoof behind and counted it oh, a little insignificant. No big deal. Pastor, can you lay off all that holiness stuff? Pastor, can we just worship five minutes instead of 15, 20? Oh, can we just worship for a couple of minutes, Pastor? It's getting a little. Because this pastor has preached. 
He, is, he sits as the watchman. Praise the Lord, somebody. He sees the love of families and broken people also. Praise God. That we not see. But it's not, it is his responsibility, his God-given ability, hallelujah, to reach out to each and every one of us. Praise God, somebody. And to think just getting, a little, uh, just getting through on Sunday service, hallelujah, is enough. Oh, no, no, no. And be, but I'm not belittling it. I don't belittle anything. But we have families being left behind. A spiritual, uh, a spiritual compromise. Look, what you abandon, <laughs> the enemy will occupy. Why? Because we have made responsible through his word. We know better. We know how. We know when. We know most of all who. Praise God, somebody. Uh, it's okay. It's not gonna, I'm not being critical about all this, all these great men God has placed in this church. Hallelujah. We've got to continue preaching the truth in the spirit of grace and of love. Hallelujah, Jesus. But we all have a job to do. We can't leave our families, our worship behind in Egypt. No, 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 no. Praise God, somebody. Even when serving God in the wilderness, because we just about... Almost there to the promise, to the promised land. Praise God. It, it won't be too much longer. And I thank God that we can still preach the gospel straight the way it is. Because there, there's no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts. Either you're in or you're out. There's no middle gray area. No, nope. Not even a hoof of a cow will be left behind in Egypt. With this, brothers, we can stand and thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you and appreciate you, God, this evening, God, that you've allowed us, God, the spirit, hallelujah, the power and the authority, God, to reclaim everything, God, hallelujah, that not only belongs to us, but it all belongs to you, God. I want to thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, for rejuvenating my spirit. Renew it, my God, so that, God, hallelujah, you have called us, God, oh, Jesus, to be the leaders of our home, God. You have called us to be leaders, hallelujah, of the souls, God, so that Jesus, Jesus, one day they come to know you as we come to know you, God. I want to thank you and appreciate you, God, for your word, God, that does the work in each and every one of us, God. In the name of Jesus, we will continue, God, to love you, to glorify you, and seek after you, God. No matter where we are in our walk with you, God, hallelujah. You are our source of worship, God. You are, my God, everything that I need, hallelujah. I want to thank you and appreciate you, God. In Jesus' name we pray and amen. Amen, amen. I want to thank you once again this evening for allowing us, God, to uh, share a little bit of God's word into your life, into your home. This Sunday, we invite each and every one of you here so that the Lord can supply your needs. Not, it, it is for all who come unto Him. It is God who does the work. It is God to hit the door. You just got to step out by faith and come into the house of the Lord and hear what said the Lord for you and your loved ones. At the end, God will receive, receive all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. I want to thank you once again in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God bless you and good night. With the help of the Lord, we'll see you Sunday, 12 o'clock prayer, 1230. Our, our service starts promptly. And in Spanish, it's a little earlier. It's a 9.30 prayer, 10.30 service. And with the help of the Lord, we'll see you here for the blessings God has for you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Good night.